Is that today? Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, there is. Right over here. Right. Yeah, perfect. We're joined now by the head coach of the NC State Wolfpack, Kevin Keats. Coach Keats will ask you to open things with a statement, then we'll take some questions. Well, the Wolfpack are here, and um, I'm so excited uh, about for our team. And, you know, we're probably a little different than everybody else that, you know, that's here in the Final Four. You know, we talked about coming here and having a lot of fun. And then obviously getting down to business when uh, we have to. Uh, but I love the way our team's playing. Uh, I don't know that anybody has ever had nine elimination games to make it to the Final Four. Uh, started back in D.C. and, you know, winning the ACC tournament. And obviously uh, we have continued to play really well uh, in the NCAA tournament. And we've done it um, with defense and um, – a couple of DJs who have really played well and um, love that part about it. But uh, my team's playing with a lot of confidence, and um, we're going to play a very good Purdue team, and we'll be challenged again. So, questions? First question in the Final Four is going to go to Aaron up front for Coach Keys. Hey, Kevin, Aaron Beard with the AP. Uh, obviously, DJ has been the center of a lot of what you do, passing and scoring, but Zach Eady is a guy that's also a space eater, takes up you know a lot of defensive attention. Donovan Klingon for Connecticut. We've got all this talk about positionless basketball, and yet there's some almost classic throwback yeah. bigs here. Like, what does that say about the role of the big man in today's game? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's I think everybody probably need to go out and get a big guy now. You know, these are trends, and it was trending towards nobody would play with their back to the basket. And here in the Final Four, you know, three guys have led their team to the Final Four because of the way they play. And, I mean, all three of those guys are really good. I mean, I, I'm excited about D.J. Burns, some great touch, lefty, uh, willing passer. And then, obviously, we're going to play against Zach Eady, who, if you ask me who keeps you up at night right now, is Zach Eady. I mean, he is um, – he's playing at a high level. Um, you know, he can really score the ball. He's, we got to get him out of the lane where he lives in that lane, and he's really talented. And the uh, way he's become a lot better is he passes the ball a lot. But – you know, when, when you lose post, traditional post in most times, um, we got three teams that are, have three guys who are really, really good. Coach, our next question is toward the back of the room, just to the right of the aisle. John. Hey, John. Kevin. John Fanta from Fox Sports. To that point, DJ, uh, of the three bigs that we just talked about, so unique in the way that he does things. In terms of players you've coached throughout your career, where would you put his unique skill set? Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. That's a great question. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I don't think I've ever coached a guy like that uh, in my life. And, you know, obviously um, the transfer portal is open now and my, my coaches are like, all right, we got to find DJ Burns. They're like, you're not going to find DJ Burns anywhere else. Um, lefty, great touch, tremendous personality. Um, doesn't really catch the ball in the post, but he ends up around the basket. I don't know that there's ever been a guy like that before. Like, he, he, the, the guards get so mad at him because they don't get assists because he dribbles, you know, six times to get where he needs to be. But he's a throwback. And um, if anybody – I know some guys in here have had a chance to spend a little time with him. Uh, what a tremendous personality. Um, you know, we were up 10 against Duke with about a minute to go. And as a coach, I'm like – I'm locked in. It's a minute to go. Anything can happen. And he's over there yelling to the, the fans and let's go and let's go. And I'm like, no, you need to lock in so we can finish the game. So he's about as unique as you're ever going to get. Uh, and I'm glad that everybody on the national stage is getting the opportunity to, to meet DJ Burns. Coach, we're going to stay in that same area of the room. Yeah, Coach, Kevin Sweeney, SI. Uh, a couple guys in the locker room uh, mentioned that you told them before the ACC tournament to, to bring something lucky. Uh, you know, Cam Woods' headband, I guess, has, has made some rounds. Have you ever done that before, and uh, how has that maybe brought your team together a little bit? No, I haven't, and, and, and I'm shocked that they listened to it too. But I, I did. I said, you know, we, you know it's, it's hard. You know, we think about us now. We, we started off 5-1 and one in the conference, and we lose our last four – and everybody loses their mind, but our last four games were really tough. And so going into the tournament, I needed something else other than, hey, you know, we're a good basketball team because we knew that. 
Um, you got to bring something lucky. And, and it's funny when you talk to guys what's lucky to them, um, what they bought, you know, to the ACC tournament and whatever works. But it's working, you know. Coach will move up front to the left. You know, Chip Alexander, the News Observer. Uh, obviously a big moment for you and your team to be the Final Four, but you have a son on the team, you have your whole family here. Just how big a moment is it for the family, Keats, to, to all be here for this? Oh, it's great. I mean, I, I got my lovely wife, Georgette, who's over there, who has, um, you know, followed me every step of the way. Uh, I, I'm i blessed. I really am. You know, I, I this is my third Final Four. Um, two as assistant coach, and then obviously having a chance to um, do it as a head coach. But, but to have, you know, one son on the team who um, I get a chance to share this special moment with every single day, and to, to have my other kid, Caden, here, uh, and my wife, Georgette, I mean, it's, it's, you know, family is so important to you. It's a, a very valuable thing. I don't know if you guys have ever, ever had a chance to experience something this big. But to have your support group, and um, my wife is a complete coach's wife. She understands. Um, she, you know, she, she's telling me after the game or at halftime, if she could, you know, what I need to run and everything else. So you know, you've been married for 23 years when that happens. And um, but it's special. I, I don't know how to put it in words um, that you know we're surrounded by. Um, I'm surrounded by some great folks, and my my family means everything to me. Coach, all the way up front to the left. Uh, Miles Mastercola with Pack Pride. Michael O'Connell has come on strong towards the end of the season. How important has his presence been in the lineup, not only for his offense, but everyone around him and just the flow of the team? Yeah, Miles, Michael is the guy that I recruited. And when I recruited him, you, I mean, you talk about a young man who has graduated from Stanford in three years. And, you know, it's taken him a while to get his voice. But, man, when he got his voice, he started playing well. So he's coaching in timeouts. He's talking at halftime. He's encouraging guys. Um, and now, you know, he went from a guy who hadn't scored many double-digit uh, games to the tournament playing extremely well. And, you know, putting him in the lineup, it, it opens up everything because it allows D.J. Horn and other guys to be able to score the basketball. And you think about it, man, he's hit some big shots, and I know you guys are going to report it. There's no bigger shot than he hit against UVA. That was a huge shot, and we probably are not here without Michael's play. Left side of the aisle, midway back. Hey, Kevin, Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Uh, just wondering, not just this week, but since the ACC tournament, how much have you and the guys heard from the team in 83, and just what has the value been for you as a coach and also to your players? All the time. I mean, those, those the 74, don't, I want to forget those guys, 74 and 83 team, they were both on campus um, this year. They both have been on campus throughout my tenure. And the relationships that they have built with our players and the relationship that I've shared with a bunch of those guys um, is very invaluable. Um, you know, every win I could get to my phone and I'll have several – text messages from uh, most of those guys. I mean, when the GOAT and when the GOAT is sending you pictures and he's got why not us on it, you got to believe in that stuff. And, you know, we get those pictures. And, uh, but they've been great. You know, I, big brothers, godfathers, whatever you want to call them, they've been great for our team. Staying up front, front row. Noah Fleischman from the Wolfpack. You mentioned it earlier, but this year, third Final Four. How much did that experience as an assistant help? And then you have two assistants on staff that have also already been here. Yeah, it means a lot. I mean, we've got a very experienced staff and guys who have shared some common things of being to the Final Four. And you now where it pays off is we can share our, our experiences. Um, now, does it help on the court? Probably not. But being able to share, um, you know, what we went through and how it looks like and what it was, and I think that goes a long way. And, you know, I, I've talked to these guys about, you know, having fun, you know, and then getting down to business. And I use the analogy. They're, they're so young. They don't understand it. I said most of some of you guys will catch it. I said when you check into a hotel, a good hotel, most of them ask you, are you here on business or pleasure? Has anybody else heard that? I hope so. I, I don't want to be the only one that says that. But, and, I, and you typically say, I'm here for business or for pleasure. And I say, if you get asked that, you say that you're, that's them right there. They're having a good time. I, if, <laughs> if anyone asks you that, 
then you need to tell them that you're here for both. And today I wanted it to be 50-50. Tomorrow I wanted it to be 75 business to 25, and then I want 100% business by the time we get to Saturday. But this, is a, this group has fun. They understand how to have fun, and I don't want to take that away from them. Coach, we'll go to the center of the room. Hi, Coach. Addison Colbuck here, Arizona PBS. Just how important is it hitting the transfer portal in today's college basketball world? Well, I would say it's pretty important to us. Our starting five is all transfers, and, you know, none of those guys started at NC State. Now, they're all NC State people now, don't get that wrong, but um, it's a different world. It depends on your need, and, you know, every coach, it doesn't work for everyone. Sometimes you have some really good players. Uh, in our situation, we, we brought in eight new guys this year. Seven of those guys for, were from the transfer portal, and it's worked for us. It may not work for every, everyone else, but at NC State, it's worked for us. Back of the room in the center, we're going to use the back right microphone, Reed. Trayvon Miles, ABC 11 in Raleigh. Hey, Coach, just in speaking with some of your players in the locker room, a lot of them pointed to the moment of getting off the plane here as one of the most surreal feelings um, for this run. I um, mean, just what you guys have gone through from the last four games uh, to D.C., to Pittsburgh, and so on. Just curious if you feel the same way about when you guys arrived uh, and stepping off the, uh, the plane to the tarmac. Yeah, I think two moments really stuck out to me, and, and I'm, a, I'm a people watcher, so I'm a player watcher these last couple of days. I just wanted to see how they would respond to it. Um, you know, getting them the, the opportunity. Now, I was here 10 years, 11 years ago as assistant coach, not here, but in the Final Four, and it didn't look anything like that. We did, when we got out the plane, we got out the plane, and the locker room wasn't dressed up like it was. And just to see us get off their plane and the look in their eyes, uh, walking into the locker room, and then having a chance to go out to the floor, that meant everything to me because that showed me how much hard work that we'd put in to get here. Now, the other message was enjoy it today. You know, this was the first time that we've ever went to a practice that I said, when you walk out on the floor, bring your cell phones with you. And they brought the cell phones and uh, I wanted to make sure that they got pictures and memories and it won't happen again. I just wanted them to enjoy that moment before we started practicing. Coach, we'll go over to the right side, Luke. Hey Kevin, Luke DeCock, Raleigh News and Observer. Um, just curious, we've talked about this a little bit over the year, but what was the actual genesis of the ice cream tradition? Yeah. How have the players embraced it? And was the shirt your idea? Yeah. So everyone in Raleigh is messing the tradition up. Every time we win a game, everybody's going out and getting ice cream. It's not about that. So I'm going to take you to back story. I, was, I took over the head coaching job at UNCW. And... They had not won a road game in a long, long time. I can't even remember how many games. It was nine losing season, but not many road wins. We got our first road win. I think I, I think we were playing UNCG. And I came in the locker room, and I was jumping up and down. But I had most of the players back from the previous year, and they had no idea how to celebrate. So in that moment, I said, we're going to go get ice cream. And from that point on, every road win – we get ice cream. And so we took, we took, we took it from um, UNCW, bought it to NC State. And uh, yes, the ice cream shirt is my idea. The one shirt that I wear, it's only one-on-one. And so everybody's like, can I get that shirt? But you can't, it's only one-on-one. But I love the ice cream. And, and listen, who doesn't love ice cream? And you get a chance to win a road win, you gotta go out and celebrate it in some way. So that's where, that's how it happened. That's what it's become. Coach, go back to the center of the room with Jeff. Jeff Borzello, ESPN. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the last, I guess, five days about DJ and possibly having an NFL future. Um, have you fielded any calls from uh, NFL front offices about DJ? And then, I guess, also, where do you see his future uh, in basketball or, or football? Yeah, no way he's going to play football. I mean, this, I mean, he got, listen, he's got a great touch. He's not that bully that you guys think. I mean, you, listen, have you ever, you spent some time with him? He's a great, he's a teddy bear off the court. 
And he doesn't really, that's why I get so frustrated when they get a call, when they call a charge on you. He doesn't bully you. He just goes around. He wills around you. Um, I, I think his future, I think he's going to play basketball. I really do. You know, who doesn't want a guy who can really pass and, and really um, score the basketball and great, got a great personality? But no way he's going to be a football player. And I have not got any calls about that. Reed, we're going to use the back left microphone. And Dennis, your question right there. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Kevin, what was the message before the ACC tournament? And then describe for me, those that don't live it, what it's like to go uh, compete with Duke in North Carolina day, you know, 24-7, 365. Um, that's it. Yeah, no, here's the weird thing is, like we're here in the Final Four. We expected to be here. I know people don't believe that. But this is not in our mind as a team. This is not a fluke. Like we knew, uh, obviously playing in the ACC, that most of our losses was not didn't have anything to do with the what uh, the other team did. Is what we didn't do. Um, we're probably a, a ten and ten team. We finished at nine and eleven. Um, but we what we did. The message was let's clean up our mistakes. And let's become better defensively. We've always, I've always had teams that were defensive-minded, 40 deflections, you know, more turnovers, forcing turnovers and everything else. And we were not doing that. And so we talked about, you know, getting better in scouting reports. Let's clean up my, our mistakes. Let's take care of ball screen coverage. And let's go win one game at a time. And as it happened, you could see after every game, our confidence growing and it's weird because someone asked me like we played nine elimination games and during those nine games I never felt like we were going to lose a game I really I felt like we were playing better and if you go back and look at most of those games we've gotten better in the second half coach back left we'll go back to Fanta oh yeah do you have a follow-up Dennis let's get Dennis the microphone yeah. for a follow quick just what it's like to go head to head with Duke and Carolina, twenty four seven, three sixty five. I think it's great. I mean, I don't, I don't know that you have um, any conference that got three teams in the same conference, and obviously they got great tradition in basketball. But I, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you of this: we don't try to beat Duke or Carolina. We try to be the best version of ourselves. We're NC State, and um, that's who we try to be. And we, though we're excited about the competition, I can also add Wake Forest in there. You know, we got in North Carolina, we got four ACC teams, but it's us. This is about us. We'll go back to Fanta. Kevin, the moment that, that you guys clinch your spot in the Final Four on Easter Sunday, there's a, a mass text amongst Northeast media sent by Coach Patino expressing his pride yeah. that, that you're here. Rick talks about a bridge, building a bridge of, of people like yourself now being able to do this. What's the biggest thing that he's imparting on you, and what have you heard from him this week? Yeah, he – listen, he's the best. And he worked the – I can't say the word, but um, when I worked for Coach Patino, man, it was all lock in and it all work. Um, I remember – give you a couple stories. Uh, myself and uh, Joaquin Jones, who used to be the head coach at Cal, there was one practice where, you know, we just got there – and we got this Hall of Fame coach, and he is working his butt off, and I'm standing over there looking. I just became, I was a head coach at Hargrave for years. I wasn't saying anything. And we had a great practice. And um, he called Joaquin and myself into the office, and he's, um, we, we were going up. We're like, wonder what coach wanted. I was like, he's probably going to tell us how good we got a chance to be. And he ripped us. And I was like, man, we just had a great practice. He, he ripped us because we were not participating enough in practice. Uh, the thing that I will tell you about Coach Patino that has helped me grow is he never put me in a box. Um, he, didn't, he didn't get me to Louisville to be just a, a recruiter. Uh, he held me responsible to be a better coach, to do scouting, to do everything else. Um, you know, when he hired me, he said, I don't hire assistant coaches. I hire future head coaches. And I'll be honest with you, I've taken some of that with me, with my coaches. Um, I've got two guys who worked under me that I hope I did the same thing for, and A.W. Hamilton and Takeo Siddle, who've done a great job. 
And I think, I think the biggest quality that you can have as a head coach is preparing your assistant coaches to have that opportunity. And I've got, a, I got plenty of coaches that were assistant coaches for me that's in Division One and uh, moved on. And I think that's the biggest thing is to, to share your knowledge and your growth with somebody else so they can have the opportunity that, that, you know, that I have. This will be the last question. We're using the back left microphone, second round. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, we saw DJ Horn here the last two years, and it's almost kind of full circle that now he's playing here. Can you talk about recruiting him and him being a local kid? Was he an easy get for you? Well, it's funny you asked that this morning. He and I were walking to the bus, and I was like, did you ever think you're going to be here? He said, man, when I, when I got in the transfer portal, I realized that this was one of the sites. And I was like, well, you're back now, buddy. You can, you know, you can be back. It, it means everything for us to have a kid from the Raleigh area that's having so much success in the tournament um, to come back home. You know, some of NC State's best players are within an hour or, you know, um, past players that were really good are within an hour and an hour and a half from my campus. And what a, what a great year that um, he's had. And I'm glad that, you know, you, you guys bought him for a year or two and then, been able to send him back to North Carolina because we're glad that he's on our team. We'd like to thank Coach Keats for joining us here in the main interview room, getting this Final Four Thanks, started guys. for us.